Same time, same location, it is time for your latest aviation news recap. And today there's good news as there's an aircraft order, airline expansion, company receiving a brand new aircraft, and a rather intriguing airline buy-in to a struggling carrier. All that is beginning now, with no better place than to begin on a positive manner, with LATAM Airlines announcing it had placed an additional order for the A321neo from Airbus. Such a deal is part of the airline's continued commitment to driving regional growth, and also this expands its backlog to 76 A321neo units. The newly announced deal, if you were curious, is for a further 13, bringing the broader A320neo family aircraft backlog to 111, and again to reiterate, 76 of those are for the 321neo. The TAM announced the deal while actually taking delivery of its first A321neo thanks to a leasing agreement with Aircap, which is a leading aircraft lesser. The A321neo has become an essential solution to the narrowbody flying at the company, with this type configured to seat 224 passengers with LATAM and features Airbus's Airspace XL bins and cabin design. Airbus notes a 40% increase in storage and space thanks to the larger bins, which does allow for larger carry-on bags and just generally more space. And given nowadays how many times you'll be at an airport and hear the announcement that your flight cannot accept luggage for the overhead bins, this is something that's welcomed. A further order for the A321 accelerates the LATAM decarbonisation trajectory, as the 321neos are at least 20% more efficient, 50% less noisy, and emit 20% less CO2 than previous generation aircraft. The Chief Financial Officer at LATAM said, Our fleet renewal and modernisation strategy is fully aligned with our sustainability commitment and brings us closer to the goal of becoming a carbon neutral group by 2050. On to our next topic of the day, and that is with Silkway West Airlines that has taken delivery of its first Boeing 777 freighter. The carrier does become the latest operator of the aircraft, with the type arriving at its base. The 777F, which has recently arrived, will enable them to meet growing cargo demand seen right around the world, and also increase their capacity subsequently. Boeing and Silkway West believe the 777F will integrate seamlessly into their operations. It is equipped with a range of 9,200 kilometers, and the aircraft can carry a maximum payload of 107,000 kilograms. Comments from the Boeing Vice President of Sales for Eurasia said, with the global air cargo fleet expected to grow by more than 60% over the next 20 years, the unmatched efficiency of the 777 freighter will boost Silkway West's capabilities and allow them to further scale their world-class cargo operations. We are honoured to strengthen our partnership as Silkway West continues to build its freighter fleet. Silkway West currently has a fleet of 12 in-service aircraft spread notably across the 747 series with 11 units mixed between the 747-400F and the 747-8F. If we're talking future fleet, well, the airline does have orders for the A350F alongside the 777-8F as part of their next generation commitment to these freighters that have recently been unveiled by Airbus and Boeing. The Vice President of Silkway West really said that the arrival of this aircraft is a defining moment in their strategic plan, as they do want to make Silkway West greener, more fuel efficient, and just generally better positioned to grow. What are your thoughts on them taking delivery of this new aircraft? You can let me know down below in the comments. Now it is over to Canada, where Porter Airlines have announced a substantial expansion towards the United States from none other than Toronto Pearson. The airline will commence service from January 2024 to its first Western US destinations in California, with Los Angeles and San Francisco seeing daily round trips. Porter Airlines will operate the two newly announced services with its Embraer E195 E2 aircraft. These recently delivered planes feature 132 seats in an all-economy configuration. Passengers on these routes will be pleased to find that these units are configured in a 2-2 manner. This means there is no middle seat for the journey to the West Coast. Fast, free Wi-Fi is also present through the flight. Premium snacks, free beer and more are also all available. 
Porter also says it offers extra legroom seats with different fare types being available if you would like this. The Toronto Pearson to Los Angeles flight will depart at 10.30 and arrive at 1.05pm local time before returning to Toronto at 2.25pm and touching down just after 10.30pm with the service slated to commence on January 16th. 2024. Meanwhile, the San Francisco leg will see a departure at 10.30 as well in the morning. Arrival in San Francisco is at 1.22pm, departure at 2.50pm, and an arrival back into Toronto at 10.36pm. So actually, the services depart from Toronto at the same time, and by the time they arrive back into Toronto, there's only a six-minute difference. That's pretty cool to say the least. The San Francisco service will commence on January 25th, 2024, therefore just over a week after the Los Angeles leg debuts. On to some of the more surprising news that has arrived into our industry over the recent day. SAS has announced it's reached a significant milestone in the ongoing Chapter 11 process. Air France KLM are set to take a stake in the carrier as part of the airline's bid towards reorganizing and emerging in a better shape. Labelled as a surprise by analysts and enthusiasts, Air France KLM will precisely take around a one-fifth ownership in the group. Despite being a founding member of Star Alliance in 1997, you may know that Air France KLM is part of SkyTeam. As a result of this new stake, SAS will depart Star Alliance and join SkyTeam. All of this is subject to regulatory approval, but for those that are interested in understanding what the new look SAS would look like, The Castle Lake Investment Fund will take a 32% ownership, the Danish government would be at 25.8%, followed by the Air France KLM Group at 19.9%, and then Lind Investment at 8.6%. SAS filed for bankruptcy protection Chapter 11 in 2022. It has since really been finding ways to acquire more funding, streamline, and generally reorganize critical elements of the business. However, funding was one of the most integral elements of this. This is now the latest step in the ongoing SAS Forward Plan, a plan you may have heard me mention on numerous times now. But the general goal is this plan will turn around the fortunes of the company and allow them to achieve long-term ambitions. While developments surrounding SAS securing a long-term pathway out of Chapter 11 and revealing the winning consortiums are great, industry experts alongside general observers are already plotting how the entry of Air France KLM into the picture will change SAS long-term. Some have speculated that the alliance change could play a role in actually adjusting route strategies for all three carriers, something that no doubt will be very likely among potential more changes to come. Either way, SAS is pleased with the announcement and says that all of this will facilitate their exit from the Chapter 11 process. And while there is still work remaining, and this is still subject to final approval, certainly they'll be a lot happier with their status. That is going to conclude today's Aviation News Recap. As always, if you have absolutely any thoughts down below in the comments, you're more than welcome to leave them. Thank you so, so much for your continued support. It really does mean a lot. I'll see you next time at the exact same place and the exact same time for the latest industry developments. Dreams and flight, and we'll fly.